PSA has once again blessed me with an over 70% gem mint 10 rate on my recent return. Let's check it out. To start us off, there always needs to be one ultra modern random card that gets a low grade out of nowhere. We have this Mew character rare from VSR Universe in a PSA 8. No idea why it got the 8. It's a little off center, but not crazy. A tiny bit top to bottom. It's got one or two little pieces of whitening here and there, but nothing crazy. So there must be some sort of small dent or something that I missed. Sticking with the theme, we've got two more character rares. I have a ton of these Gengar character rares from Dark Phantasma. I love them. I was buying them when they were like 2 or $3 a piece, and I'll be sending a ton out for grading. I wanted to send a few of these to PSA just to see how they were doing with that rough cuts up at the top and we did pretty well on a couple of these so i have the dark phantasma gengar and the dark phantasma pikachu and they both got gem mint 10s i bought a bunch of great sar cards from vsr universe this one is the dark cry really nice looking card one of my favorite artworks from the set i just think you know dark cry is one of my favorite mythical pokemon and this was a really nice artwork of dark cry next up we got raiko rest in peace buddy with that terrible paradox long neck whatever they're doing to you feel really bad for you Raiko but this artwork is still one of the best Raiko artworks out there just the ferocity and the speed oozing out of this card I love it so much this set was just fantastic next up we got the PSA 10 of the Suicune again just looking at the stars out in the glacial wasteland absolutely beautiful looking card sliding into some evolutions we have the glaceon v star glaceon out in the woods in the snow again just a beautiful artwork all of these are just so amazing looking these cards are just gorgeous we have a nine of the leafeon v star this was kind of unfortunate to get the nine on this one this one is probably one of my favorite sars from the set i just think there's so much detail here, Leafeon in a greenhouse. I like that his tail is being dipped in some sort of like water or something, keeping it hydrated. It's just a fantastic little card. Last but not least, the most badass Pokemon card that's probably ever been made. Look at that. Stare into its eyes and tell me that you're not terrified for your life right now. Lucario V-Star. What an amazing, amazing card. What a perfect choice for the ETB promo as well. I love this card so much. Lucario definitely up in like my top 10, top 20 favorite Pokemon. This artwork of him is just so badass. We went from ultra modern character rares to ultra modern SARs from VSTAR Universe, now to Sun and Moon tag team cards. We've got Gengar and Mimikyu GX from Tag Bolt. This one got the nine. I thought I had a chance at the 10, but maybe the centering. I feel like they're pretty harsh on the tag team centering. I could be wrong though. I feel like I've gotten tens where it's looks pretty dang off center and then i've got nines where they seem super strict on things gengar mimikyu what a pair gengar and mimikyu both fantastically popular pokemon they have lots of fans next up we have a couple of rainbow venusaurs so i kind of had these ones sitting around didn't think i would grade them wasn't sure if they would get the 10 or not but they both got the 10 so that's awesome we got the venusaur celebi and the venusaur snivy and two more tag team rainbows for you we've got two of the espion deoxys both in ps say 10 obviously an evolution and a legendary you can't really go wrong with that combination and espion is one of the more sought after ones so just a fantastic little card i actually like the rainbows the texture on the japanese rainbows is really nice yeah if you're looking at cards from 50 feet away it might be tough to tell who it is but i don't know the last time i was ever looking at a card from 50 feet away so keeping with the rainbow motif for one more card we've got the giratina v-star this one got the psa 10 i haven't seen a lot of the rainbows in english but i feel like the rainbows in english all have a very similar glittered not super textured but the japanese Japanese, not only do they have kind of the glitter rainbow thing going on, but they also have like this interesting texture to them as well, which gives it a little bit more depth. It wouldn't be a Jabu Kuma return without some mid-era hollows, so we're going to move into those now. We've got the Houndoom from Reviving Legends in a PSA 9. I made the mistake of putting these cards after some cards that I knew wouldn't get 10s, so I feel like maybe they got a little more harshly graded, possibly. I don't like to buy into a lot of those conspiracies, but it seemed kind of weird that once it hit those cards in the submission, all of a sudden the grades started going down. Always gonna have one of these in the submission. We've got a Soul Silver Collection, Nine Tails, in a nine this time, unfortunately, not the 10. Now we have the Politoed from Soul Silver Collection. This is just a cute little artwork. I like that it has the, what, the King's Rock or whatever it's called in the back. And we have a Secret of the Lakes Alakazam. So this is 
like one of the few cards in Secret of the Lakes that's not like a weird 3D artwork. I think Celebi maybe is another one that's not 3D. This is one of my favorite from Alakazam. You can tell he's using some sort of reflect or psychic barrier. Unfortunately though, it got the nine instead of the 10, probably centering or something of that nature. Luckily, not all of our mid era got nine. Some of them did get 10s. So we have an advent of Arceus, Zapdos, G, Hollow, and a PSA 10. Shout out to the Green Shiz, the ultimate Zapdos collector. Really cool looking Zapdos, really cool looking card. Next, we got the Ho-Oh from Shining Darkness. This one got the PSA 10 as well as the Lugia from Shining Darkness. Now I have a, a couple of these that have gotten nines and eights, but we finally nailed the 10 on both of these and they're both unlimited, which is really cool. I'm not sure what the difference is in the pop, but typically in the mid era, there are some sets where unlimited is a lot harder to come by than first edition. Now, I don't know if they sell the same way. I think people, especially in the West, they see first edition and they think rarer. So it's a little hard to convince people that like, oh no, the unlimited version is actually more rare over here first edition is more rare, more sought after in the earlier sets. And we didn't have first edition when it got to these sets. Whereas in Japanese, there was no first edition. And then all of a sudden they started getting first edition in like the E-series set. So it's, a, it's kind of a flip-flop situation. Last but not least, I sent two of these Blastoise out and luckily they both got tens. Now the top to bottom centering on both of these is pretty off. Pretty happy that they both still secured the 10, the top to bottom centering must have still been within the range, even though, man, they do look pretty top heavy to me. I really like this Blastoise a lot. One of the better Shiny Darkness Hollows, in my opinion. Onto the cards that I knew weren't gonna get a 10 that I put midway through the submission that I maybe should have put at the end of the submission. But we've got the Houndoom Hollow. This is the Houndoom Prime card from a, it's a constructed standard deck. This is a first edition, the Tyranitar deck, maybe, something like that. It's so weird that they put Japanese Tyranitar Houndoom Hollow constructed deck. <laughs> it's so odd, but uh, yeah, it's Houndoom. <laughs> And I really do like prime cards. I think they're really cool. I like the whole really close up artwork. Some of them are better than others, obviously. I feel like the Houndoom one is really nice. You get like the moon in the background, you get his tail back there, really kind of uh, smug looking smile through the artwork as well. Just a really cool artwork of Houndoom. Next up, we've got two Unlimited from Reviving Legends. We have the Reverse Hollow Tyranitar and the Hollow Tyranitar, both in PSA 9. Once again, Unlimited. I feel like Unlimited is a little harder to come by when it comes to Heartcode Soul Silver, but both of these cards, really cool looking, really like Tyranitar, one of those really popular Pokemon that doesn't get enough love in my opinion. I decided to buy an array of different cards from this particular species. We have Rayquaza. So we have a few Rayquaza cards, all of them are different, a nice variety of stuff. First, we've got the full art from Blue Sky Stream. I believe this card came out in Evolving Skies in English. Unfortunately, I got the nine. That's really tough on a card like this. Probably should have gotten the 10. I don't know why this one would have gotten the nine. Really nice looking card, nice looking artwork. Definitely will probably buy more of these in the future. Just definitely really, really like Rayquaza. Really like this setup as a full art. And yeah, Rayquaza V, PSA nine, unfortunately. Next up, we've got the 10 of the Blue Sky Stream Hyper Rare. This is the PSA 10 Rayquaza V Max Rainbow. Again, I really like the rainbows, especially from the Sword and Shield era. There's more contrast in the Sword and Shield era. It's easier to see the artwork, what you're working with. And they just have some really great looking, look at that texture, oh my God. God, they're so nice. And very similarly to that, except a little bit more gold, we've got the VMAX Climax Ultra Rare Rayquaza VMAX Gold card. This one got the PSA 10 as well. I wasn't quite sure about the very blocky black highlights and background on these cards, but I feel like they're actually, they're, they're aging pretty well with me. I actually think they're quite interesting. We had to grab a CSR Rayquaza VMAX. Really like this card a lot. Rayquaza are looking a little derpy in this artwork, but I do like the trainer here in the front, kind of badass facing backward, and Rayquaza showing just how imposing his size is and just how badass he looks. But yeah, really beautiful, really colorful, nice texture on this one as well. Man, Japanese cars just have really good texture. I'm telling you, dude, it just looks so good. Last but not least, we've got a holo from the black and white from Dragon Selection. This is a Gem Mint 10. I've only graded one other Gem Mint 10 of this particular Rayquaza, but I really like the look of this one. I like all the fiery and electric kind of swirl background that's going on there. Really good contrast to the, the bright green in the front that is Rayquaza. The artwork's really nice. Rayquaza's looking very badass. Yeah, I really like actually the Lion Hollow. I don't know, the Lion Hollow continues 
continues to grow on me. I think it's kind of an interesting, it's unique, you know? You know exactly what era it's from. It makes things stand out. I think it's kind of interesting. So you've probably been thinking this whole time, where are the Charizards? This guy is a massive Charizard simp. Where are the Charizards? Well, I will not disappoint you because now we have some Charizards. Now I got two PSA 10 full arts from Starbirth of the Charizard. And then we've got not one, but two PSA 10s of the hyper rare Charizard from Starbirth. This obviously, I've showed multiple rainbow cards in this submission so far. I think the rainbows are just really cool. Let's check the texture on this bad boy. Oh yeah, look at that texture. Oof, man, they give such an interesting texture to the background on these cards. I actually really like the artwork here. I think Five Band did a decent job on this one. I think the rainbow actually makes it look a little bit better than the regular VSAR. Once again, a black and white Charizard. This is from Freeze Bolt. I think this is my first PSA 10 of this particular card and it's unlimited. I don't know really what the pop difference is on that, but that unique Lion Hollow, that awesome Freeze Bolt Charizard artwork looking really good. Looks like he's uh, firing off a fire spin or something at an enemy. Very awesome looking Charizard card. We've got one card left though, and that card is a card that I've graded a lot of. We have the Charizard Hollow from Advent of Arceus. This one is first edition. This one got the PSA 10. I have graded quite a few PSA 10s, quite a few PSA 9s. I've done quite well on this card over time, and I continue to do decently, and this card is just awesome. It's a Jimeno artwork, very cool looking, and PSA 10, Gotta love it. If you guys love PSA returns, make sure to check out this video where I got three cards back worth over $1,000.